says off it. Oh, there it goes. Now he says that we're alive. All right. Now is the time for grief if you're going to do it. No, it's a donkey. A donkey. He hasn't prepped this at all, man. It's prepped. It's ready. It's ready. I'm right here. Like I, I brought a hat, a funny hat. This is my funny dungeon mastering hat. Uh, oh, what more wait, could wait, a dungeon wait, master wait, need? Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'll be back in a second. I'm going to get my hat in. Yeah, you can't approach the table, sir, without a funny hat. Chris, where's your funny hat? Are you growing your beard again? Um, is it, it, is it grows November? It all by itself. Right, you're not, you didn't hit the start button, huh? Um, Alright, so i got to figure out three level two spells. Three level two spells. Here's, here's the fun thing for the Halloween thing with the play by the seat of your pants thing. You can take any uh, spells that you like. Let us say that you have collected a wide range of dangerous and varied spells. You can choose any spell that you wish from any level. But you have to stick with the rules as they're as they are on the chart. So it could be phenomenally dangerous to do so, but you could have a nice. Now there is a there is a wicked oh, dungeon hat. mastering hat. There we go. It's kind of dark nice. in here, but I like it that way. That's because your massive cranium horns block out the sun. It is. Yeah. And and uh, Chris is lit by the. The calming orange glow of his monitor. I'm stirring my tea. Spanish. I couldn't find Scottish tea, Jason, so I, I'm drinking English instead. That's all right. That would you would cool. you would you deign to drink Twinings? Pronounce that again. Twinings. Wow. Twinings. I, it's tea, man. I drink tea, but you I know, know. I don't, there's alcohol in it, but I drink it. I don't have any alcohol. I haven't had any alcohol for days, so that's why I'm drinking tea. Well, that explains everything. I, I know. I'm not prepped. It's terrible. Please I help apologize me. in advance to everyone for my rude and abusive impressions that I'm going to do tonight. It's the first time I've gamed in a while, so hmm. don't do blame it on Noah. You'll do fine. All right, so Chris, you're you're prepped and ready to go, are you not? Um. Mostly. Oh, you're still thinking about spells. Well, I think I know what I'm going to take, anyways. You know what we could do? You could, uh, you could pick one, and I could pick one, and Jason could pick one, and they could be any level. You can pick. Uh, we'll we'll do it by. You can do it by uh, the old school import rules from Crawl. You know, like uh, pick your spells from anywhere. I don't think I've ever done that before. If you guys want to pick, you just want to pick a spell from me. Oh, is this for clerics? Yeah. He's level three. He's a level three cleric, but uh, he can... Well, who's, who's his god? I'm on tour or something like that? Yeah, it's a god of mysteries you know, and... The quick way to do it is just to jump out to Purple Source or create a third level cleric and just take the spells from that. Yeah. That, would be, that would be quick and easy. Purple Sorcerer... So, let, I mean, while we're... Okay, so OSR today, how's that going? It's going great, man. It's yeah, like gangbusters. Hmm? It's like gangbusters. How do you find the time with graduate school and, and fatherhood and all that other stuff to be doing such a, a, a booming business on the website? I uh, type a lot while I'm in the bathroom. Yeah, okay. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I was expecting something like that, though. Oh, actually, we've just started having a bunch of contributors come on board and... Uh, so they, they've started posting a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Glenn Seal of Monkey Blood Design has been posting maps for a little while. Mm -hmm. So for the past few weeks, he's been posting some of his maps. I've been looking at those. Yeah, they're nice. Um, we've just started having some people. Um, Bob Brinkman has been posting stuff. Yep, Bob, Jen's uh, husband, yeah. Yeah, Bob uh, posts. Um, he's posted a bunch of stuff. He did, he did a thing on Cyborg Commando today. Uh, I I didn't read it. I was at work, but I saw that it, you know, I saw that it went by my feed. Uh, a game that is, is I think I actually played that one time in like the fourth or fifth grade or something. Yeah. It was phenomenally uh, wonky. Is that what the I, is that what the gist of the article was? Actually, it's the antithesis of that. There you go. So you want you want to go have a look at that? It's a uh, it's a bit controversial. Um, well, not really, but you know it, it's what Bob did. A, it's actually an article that Bob wrote for another. Uh, publication, but he, he offered it up to us to, to publish it, and it's still going to go in the other publication. Mm -hmm. so, um, 
But yeah, so and then we've got a whole bunch of other people coming up. They're starting to write. We've got fiction coming up soon. Nice adventures. We've got some people wanting to write adventures that are coming. We've got more monsters. We've got more tables. Mm-hmm. We've got a lot more stuff. Reviews are coming soon. You know, it's just slowly piecing it all together piece by piece so that we can actually. Um, I want, I want to provide content on an ongoing basis, but not just like make it slapdash. It's like you know, bring yeah. it in piece by piece, see what people like. Yeah, it's highly polished. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean it's good. High quality production values are, are terrific. I love it. Well, trying my best. Yeah. Trying my best. It's That's it's it. helping pay the bills right now. So. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hate to say this, but in my professional life, with a guy, as a guy with a master's degree and a, you know, in a modest job, as the sole sole provider of the household at this point, the sales from the module actually like made a difference. And I was like, how could this be so in my life that a hobby thing? Yeah. Made I, the, I, I, a lot of people. Out. You get a nice little bit of extra chunk of change from from gaming stuff. I mean, it's, I I get a lot of uh, money coming in from from other stuff, from the other stuff that I publish. Yeah. The yeah. problem is that OSR today cuts into a lot of my time for the other stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, sure, yeah. But Obviously, I've right. I've been sick lately, so I'm getting over that, and that's really what I've been working on for the most part, more than anything else. Cool. And then, okay, Chris, uh, how how's your selection of third level spells going? I think I've got it down. Cool. You, so you don't have to tell me. Okay. We'll, we'll do it as the time comes. You've got magic missile. Uh, you, take, you, you, can even take, you can even take wizard spells if you like. That's all right. That's well, it. I took two. Claire, I'll take a wizard one. That would be exciting. Man, it's been such a long time since I've even looked at this. I meant to take some time to read it today, but it's been a while. The rule book? Yeah, I know it's not much, but I, it's been a while, so I just wanted to go over it. It, it's it's Halloween, man. It's been a busy day. Yeah, yeah. And this is a this is a relaxed atmosphere, full of love, horror, shooting your pants, uh, you know, level draining, uh, swallowing of souls. All it's it's but it's all it's all predicated on love, though, and acceptance. That's how we do things here. Wow, really? No, not really. <laughs> I'm I'm only in it for power tripping because right. That's that's the way I operate. All right, well, I'm going to have you do all my dice rolling for me, I'm afraid, because my dice roll or screwed. Unless I use my... Let's just do a little bit of pimping on air. Unless I use my purple sorcerer uh, on my phone. I, you know what? Uh, I, have, I only have like 20% left of my battery, but uh, I'll do the same. And I'll hold it up to the camera for positive. No, that's not going to work. Read it, yeah. I'll just use the roll 21. It'll be fair that way. Nobody's going to argue with that. That's funny. What's for crawler's companion on my phone. I... Just rolled a D100. Mm-hmm. See which wizard spell I would get, and yeah. I figured out what I'd get. Was it cool? Don't yeah, tell me. It's cool. Nice. All right. It is not on the cleric spell list in any form. It's not. Close. Sweet. Okay, I think you know we're gonna proceed because it doesn't appear that we have uh, other joiners at the Ooh, moment. That's annoying. Yeah. So. Okay, so I mean, you know, standard Halloween lead up to the thing. Oh, what, he's, I just started talking. He took off. Oh, there it is. Um, so standard Halloween lead up. You know, uh, I think I mentioned you're both familiar with Barrow Maze, right? Jason, intimately so. And Chris, you've played my Barrow Maze campaign before, right? I'm. I think I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm too familiar with it. Yeah. So generally, the notion is that. Uh, Helix is about, uh, you know, a couple miles away, about two hours walk. Let's say that, uh, you know, a new mound popped up. Uh, things have hit a, a sort of stable homeostasis in the uh, terror that is living in Helix. You know, various ghoul raids and wandering packs of walking skeletons that gnaw people's face off. Of course, you know, there's been a booming economy in the, se- in the sale of uh, funerary masks in Helix. It's almost a... Uh, you know, there's there's counterfeit ones, there's, you know, craftsy ones and different, you know, people coming in from far and wide to collect the, the masks of the dead that auto-generate from the pits of hell sprinkled here and there in the barrel maze. And also the ones that were buried there historically with the dead. So, um, yeah, so let's say that, you know, a, a group of adventurers has come back and, uh, and, and spouted off that there's a... Uh, there's a new mound, uh, quite larger than the others, uh, right on the southeast side of the thing, of the complex as you come in uh, to the, the Barrow Maze complex. You know, if you take the stone path up to the 
right, on the right, there's Nurgle's plinth, and then the uh, the drop or whatever it is that people call it. Um, to the right of that, and a little to the southeast, I, I guess, would be a brand new barrel maze that's you know gigantic. Now, uh, if you like, the mists have re receded, and uh, let's say that they go off into the the other complex of other mounds that you may or may not know about if if you use those things in your uh, in your campaign. Or we can, you know, you can stay in town. I, I'm, I'm only the helmsman. I'm not the admirable, the admirable admiral, despite my flunky hat. It's an, it's an open sandbox session here. You can say wherever you like to go, and we'll sort it out as it, as it comes. I have plans, but we can do away with it if you like. Oh, you know, it's, it's no fun unless we screw with the GM. You know. Of course, I give you, and it's, it's better for me if I bend over slowly and say, I give you permission. Man, we're, we're, we're playing a game. We're not married. I know. But it'll feel like we're married in a little bit. <laughs> um, Chris, what do you think, man? Um, I like the... I like the idea of at least taking a look on this new big mound. Mm. And if it looks too scary, we can run away. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how people have done it historically. The only the only notable difference besides its size is that uh, um, where before there was a muddy patch of grass and some stringy weeds, now there is a uh, a row of uh, you know marble pillars streaked with red, you know maybe uh, crusty with uh, bloody streaks, and uh, an opening in the ground that goes you know to the east, and uh, strangely enough, up above the edge of the the mound on the right hand side as you approach. There's half a stone head about 15 feet high. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are we, are we going right now, or are we going to get information first? Because well, I mean, I'm just telling you, this is the rumor, right? Oh, the rumor. Sorry. Okay. You don't actually see this, but this is okay. what's related to you. By uh, Squidgy Bird. Yeah, that's his name, Squidgy Bird. Squidgy Bird. Squidgy Bird. He, uh, he comes back. He's, he's a well-known petty larcenist and, and cut person. Uh, that's what he says. He says, yeah, well, the, the head was, yeah, it must have been 12 feet high. Never seen anything like it before. Was it a human head? Like a uh, I only head? saw the top half, and it glowered like this. Why well, me a drink, mate? My whistle's wet. Well, that might be due to some leakage rather than anything else. <laughs> yeah, he chews choose belladonna leaves as a hobby. Bad news. Chris? I'll, I'll pay for his drink. I don't think we're going to get much more out of this guy anyway. A couple coppers. He's already half sloshed anyhow. Yeah. Don't forget to note it on your character sheet. Yep. So many coppers. What's the name of the tavern that you guys hang out in? Your favorite tavern in Helix. There's a couple. The Stringy Weasel? That'll work. They make better stew. And that's probably actually what Squidgy Bert's problem is. Too much weasel stew? No, he's got a stringy weasel, so he's oh, yeah, right. getting a whistle from that, you know. Right. Squidgy Bert, the uh, cut purse. You never could tell if a Squidgy is his first name or uh, like an adjective. Well... well so far, we've got this guy's word on it. Is is everybody talking about this? This must be the talk of the town. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, the other the other members of the party that came back there was um, there was a uh, an alchemist, there was a cleric, and there was a pair of dwarves. Um, they haven't been seen since uh, they returned. Uh, Squidgy Bird uh, has already frittered away his money on on uh, belladonna leaf and uh, ugly women. What, what do you think about trying to find that other party? Well, I think we should probably ask this one what information he has first. I suggest you pump him. Mm. What information? Feel free. All right, no, we no, did. No, no. Uh, the nobility doesn't deign to fall to such mm. things as that. Minions such as yourself, who find themselves uh, following such things as gods, would do such a thing like that. Mm. Well played, noble. Engelbert Humperdinck, the noble of the, of the Humperberts of... Uh, 
Uh, the the New Albany. Oh, New Albany, humble, humble beards. New Albany, yeah, good. Yes. Well, as you say, I'll, I'll I guess I will go back to speak. Pump, pump him hard. Drunk. Um. We'll cheer on the sidelines. Where, where exactly were you, friend, when you saw the mound? Uh, sir, I'm, uh, let me get back in character. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid to... No, wait a minute. No, that's not right. It was like a cockney kind of thing, wasn't it? Um, I feel self-conscious because uh, because there's people with accents naturally here that I try to duplicate badly. Uh, okay. uh, me whistle's a little wet. Okay, there it was. Um... Where were we exactly? Well, uh, Trudgy, he was uh, he was ahead of me. That's the uh, shorter of the dwarfs. Um, Alric, uh, Alric the Fat, our fighter, he was behind, and uh, there was a pack of ghouls chasing us, nipping at our heels. Uh, particularly vicious lot. So you were coming out of another mound when you saw this thing rise? Uh, we were collecting harpy feathers. The barrel harpies. So did you see any creatures on the mound itself, or were you too busy running to notice that sort of thing? Uh, you know, when you're on that side and you're running fast, you're always passing the dead. Now, my probably neutral, most likely chaotic man, you mentioned Alaric the Fat. You said he was a fighter, yes? Mm. Yes. He's a he didn't fighter. come back, did he? Uh, I ain't seen or heard from him since. So that's a no, then. Mm, I couldn't say. All I know is uh, <laughs> I run faster than Alec the Fat does. Mm. Who did make it back to Tom? Now, he mentioned an alchemist, a cleric, and a pair of dwarfs. One of them called Trudgy. What's the other dwarf called? Mm, I didn't catch his name. Uh, Dower Lad, uh, one of the bald ones from down below. So that narrows it down to about 5,000. Mm. Uh, probably in Helix. What's the cleric's name? Uh, there's Alric the Fat. The cleric was uh, Tomas. Tomas. Mm. Tomas. Does he have a brother that came before him? Was called Uno? <laughs> no, this is Thomas. Uh, T O M A S. Yeah. He's a uh, cleric of uh, St. Isaac. Uh, he always wants to go down and look at the shrine. <laughs> oh, there's so many things I could say about that. And what about uh, the alchemist? Um, that were, uh... Um, Perhaps another drink will refresh your memory. <laughs> uh, he gulps it down in one, in one fell swoop, uh, particularly uh, a reedy version of uh, hoppy ale or something like that, right? He goes, ah, that's right. His name were X, X the Mystic. X the Mystic. Mm -hmm. Just like the letter X. Just like the letter X. You you know the alphabet, yes? Mm, the common one, yes. Uh, oh, oh there. you're definitely common. <laughs> well, where does this um, mystic re like reside in town? Mm, we didn't remember the hang that much. Uh, I I uh, I used to often see him over on the uh, you know the uh, the row of curiosities. Uh, I don't shop on that side of town. Well, we could go over and find wherever the alchemist shop is and see if they know him. Mm. He's the guess. tall one. Scars on his face. Burns on his arms. You'll know him. So he's not very good at alchemy, then? Mm. That might explain why you went into the barrow mounts. <laughs> he's always trying to get better, that one. And he came out with a pair of scrolls, too. Yeah, not a bad haul for a guy like that. What concerns me is the fighter didn't make it out. Mm. He may have been in his cups. Speaking of which, I've got a date with a hot lass over there on the other side. He winks, right? He winks across the bar. And uh, there's only a handful of uh, toothless, uh, middle-aged, you know, broken-down mare mares on the other side of the place. But uh, he sidles over. Uh, he gives you a wink. Pleasure doing business with you, lads. All right. Does he realize that he's going towards the stables? <laughs> yeah. Um, right. It's a euphemism. It's a euphemism. Women of negotiable virtue. 
I don't have any more tea. Why am I putting honey in my cup? Well, but look, what say you? Should we go and look up this alchemist? I, I would like to do that. If he could has, if he has any information that would help us, if we end up going to this place, I'd like to have it. Mm. I don't like surprises. Well, why don't you stand really close to him and question him, and I'll stand back in case the conversation gets explosive. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you poke around. Uh, we're going to call it uh, Powder Keg Row. How about that? That'll work. So wow, that nothing bad could happen there, huh? <laughs> it's it's frequently the uh, the site of, uh, of fistfights, but nobody knows why. Timpers are always running high on Powder Keg Row. Um, that's a new... You know, when when the Barrow Maze Complete finally does come out, uh, I'm not sure that I'll retcon any of it into my own personal understanding of what... Uh, keep, keep your own time, man. So it's, it's all your own work. All right, so is this guy um, is this guy in? Is he available? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, if you stay outside some... Whoa, I just lost everybody there. You guys hear me? I can hear you, but yeah, I can't no, hear you. You went crazy there, man. You went all quiet. Noah broke. Uh, we apologize for this interruption in your scheduled Barrow Maze entertainment this evening. Yeah, he's back. Yeah, it, it does that every once in a while. I was working fine, and then and then it switched, uh, actually switched microphone inputs on me. Hmm. Well, I don't need this. Um, yeah, yeah, if you stand outside a couple of uh, foreign-owned, uh, you know, uh, import-export shops... With some swarthy, uh, you know, what do they call them? Uh, we're going to say they're Alf Grimnians, right? They're, uh, they've got powdered wigs and, you know, decor decorative uh, painted moles and, you know, pursed lips and all that stuff. Uh, finally, uh, there's a... Kind of people. There's a, there's a puff of uh, acrid smoke, right? And uh, this uh, a tall, lanky, scarred man with, uh, you know, his hair, you know, is shortened in tufts, and it looks like it's been singed a lot. Uh, he's uh, he's sort of wild-eyed and uh, and uh, hairy-looking, right? He's, he's carrying a box of components that he just picked up. Uh, that's it. Um, I'll, the halfling vertical just go right over to him. Like right in front of him, so he practically trips over him. Mm -hmm. Oops. Yeah. They, uh, oh, Mr. Z, we're here to uh, to inter interview you about your recent adventures in the uh, in the Barrow Maze, mm. and um, your your fame will be spread far and wide if you just sit down and talk to us for a little bit. Mm. Okay. Well, uh, you know, I'm I'm quite busy. I've got an appointment. Uh, with a man about a, a potion later, but uh, I can spare about seven minutes if you want to buy me a, a breakfast buddy or something. Sure, you lead the way. Okay. You say uh, he wants us to buy him a breakfast buddy. Yeah, right. right. Is that? It's a sandwich with meat and an egg. Right. Um, Sometimes of these people are quite strange. <laughs> so uh, there's right. a buddy in my country means something quite different entirely. What does it mean? That's a show, not a tell. Oh, okay. I don't want to know. Uh, so yeah, it's a piece of uh, rough bread with mayonnaise and some acrid gross meat and a piece of cheese and a you know half cooked egg or something with gravy or something. That's how they do it here. And then so he's he's wolfing it down. I mean, yeah, he's. He spends all his money on uh, spell components and, uh, yeah. and uh, dusty, dusty scrolls. So he's. Uh... Well, the the word about town is that you bravely um, escaped from the new mound, hmm. bearing two scrolls, and our readers want to know all about it. He says, "No, no, no. We didn't go into the new mound. 
but it, it's strange that you asked me this because uh, I was visited by a gentleman just last night uh, with a proposal. Uh, I had to turn him away. But no, we were on the eastern side of the complex uh, hunting down uh, and trading for um, barrel harpy feathers for a client of uh, client of Ulrich's. Yeah, uh, he was commissioned to go and collect feathers, and that's what we were doing. And it just so happened that uh, while we were there, uh, we noted that there was a there was a new mound there where there wasn't there when we went in. Uh, strangely, what what can you tell about the tell us about this mound, Mr. P? It sounds exciting. <laughs> well, it was about, you know, the standard thing uh, is what you say about uh, the size of a barrel, right? It's, a, uh, you know, it's about 40 feet wide. Um, this one was about two or three times that uh, length and uh, sort of sprawled over the whole uh, southeastern portion of the, uh, of the complex. And it, it looked like it went off into the swamps, too. Um, but we didn't actually go in. Um, there was a big, uh, a big black... Half, half a head sticking out on top and marble pillars and that sort of thing and uh, yeah, a terrible look on his face. So uh, um, we took note. Uh, um, Thomas, Brother Thomas, he uh, took some chalk rubbings of the thing and then uh, we were set upon by ghouls and uh, ran back. So uh, he says, uh, Thomas actually uh, handed, handed me the rubbing and he takes it out and there's some, you know, some runes on there that... Uh, I don't know. I, what, what what languages do you know, fellas? Um, common, halfling, bugbear, goblin, pixie, and gnome for mm. the halfling. Wow, that's a lot. Okay. He, I think his. Tr I don't even know what it was. He just got a lot of languages somehow. I don't know how. That's cool. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I don't oh, know much more than that. You, you have runic alphabet, don't you? Uh, I do Google. indeed have runic alphabet. Good. I was just about to get to that there. What uh, what language is it? Human? Uh, well, that's a spell, so let's have a quick look at that. Let's put that up in the book here. See, this is why you should read the book ahead of time. Look at that. Read the book. Read the book. Cast a spell and see uh, see what you can do with it. The other oh. one just has orc in common. Orc in common. So right. I have a magic sword that detects gems. Does he have a lot of gems on him? Not that I want to rob him. I'm just curious. Um, that's uh, I don't don't know. Uh, give me what's the plus of your magic sword? Does it have a plus? It's a plus one. Plus it detects one. gems at ten feet, and I'm right up on him. Uh, I mean, you know, he's pretty impoverished. He probably only has a couple of uh, gold crowns. To his name, but he doesn't I wanna, carry around. Can I pickpocket some money into his pocket? You, <laughs> yeah, if you want to. Yeah, that's not going to be any good. It's going to be his lucky day. What uh, what runic alphabet is it? Well, runic alphabet is, is a spell, just me allows me to inscribe runes that do things. Yeah, it yeah, doesn't actually limit. Yeah, I know it does. Be anything, so. Yeah, I mean, is it the human? Is it the elven? What is it? The there's a couple of um, different varieties, different flavors of runic alphabet, right? Well, they've got dwarven runes, elder sigils, hieroglyphs, sphinxes, blah, 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 blah. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go with, since we don't have an elf here, I've got three, two extra languages. I'm going to choose elven is one of my languages, and then I'll choose the elven sigils for that as well. So. Okay, so for a level one wizard spell, there's runic alphabet mortal. Yep. And then there's a... Uh, Runic alphabet, like Elven or Fairy or something like that, which is a level three spell. Which I'm I don't sure. got. So. Okay, so we'll say that yeah, this is an ancient runic, uh, runic spell. I mean, these are runes from a uh, distant past. But since you know that spell, I'm gonna say that uh, you know maybe you can do what you can. You know, give it a shot. Perhaps it will provide some insight if you're inclined. I'm not telling you to cast a spell or not or whatever. Because <laughs> what could go wrong, huh? Well, any number of fun things could go wrong, but it doesn't have to. All right, let's go ahead and cast that sucker. Stand back, I'm about to do some magic. Runic alphabet, mortal. How does... Okay, so... Uh, uh, Eximistic, uh, he says, Oh, well, you're about to cast a spell. I love to watch these. Uh, it's something of a speciality of mine. He leans in real close. I think he's, he's probably... Probably the equivalent of a level one 
uh, wizard, but uh, he's, uh, he's he pulls out a little notepad and he begins. Uh, okay, go ahead. I'm ready. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Do you have a material magic? Do you know how the spell works? Because the spell normally is like used to activate things like alarms, messages. Yeah, don't worry about it. We're All just, right, okay. I mean, I'll, we'll, I'll we'll, we'll, go with, we'll go with the results that come. All right. You ready? Yeah. I can't look at this. Oh, am I rolling for you or are you doing it? Oh, I've got my thing. I, I rolled. All right, it's lost. Failure. What was the result? I got a, <laughs> I got a five. A five? Really? Seriously? I got a five? Well, I mean, you know, the spell, you don't have to be, in, you know, evoking the uh, the full power of the spell. That was ridiculous. Pretty clearly. All right. Well, that sucked. At least I didn't roll a one. There we go. Can I copy down the rune in case we want to check it out later? You went oh, it did again. Uh, somehow it's switching the input on my mic. That's weird. My my headphone mic isn't even plugged in. You do hear me, right, guys? Well, we can hear you now, yeah, but you yeah. can cut out. Yeah. I'm going to say that uh, you don't need to get a full spell result. I'm just going to say that, uh, you know, you do the... How does the spell is it cast for you there, nobleman? So again? What happens when you cast that spell? Did you ever do a mercurial effect for it? Oh, I never did do a mercurial effect for it. It's the best part. Yeah, this is, in my opinion, the best part of the game. And Give me a D100, then. All right. And I'll tell you. I'll look it up. It's on page 111 of your text, if you like. But no, I forgot to do that for all of them, didn't I? What's your luck? Oh, I got a zero for my luck. Oh, okay. <clears throat> all right, I got three. Oh, shit. Oh, no, crap. That's not a good result. I know three it's not a good result. Oh, no. Okay, in order to cast the spell, the wizard must either dedicate the soul of the target to his patron or the soul <laughs> of a creature with hit dice equal to that. Okay, you're not actually casting a spell, though, but that's good to know. Okay, yeah, maybe uh, X doesn't realize it, but he gets a little bit paler as you uh, make the <laughs> mystic gestures in the air, right? I, I he, get, uh, I get. He, looks a little, he looks a little woozy, right? He says, <coughs> oh, I've been working with, uh, with soul... Sulfur, uh, red sulfur. It's probably uh, having an effect on my on my constitution. So uh, yeah, all right. You make out pretty clearly uh, before the uh, energy of your gestures leave your leaves your head. You make out the word uh, Guteros. Guteros, right? I mean, if it was like Greek, it would look sort of like what I just put in the chat thing. Guteros. And he says, uh, "Well, what do you make of it?" Well, it's um, ancient, it's old, it's mostly indecipherable for anyone of lesser ability. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're ready to understand the full potency of this, so I'm going to share only one bit of it. Guteros. Oh, it's, uh, it's strange. Uh, my... Uh... Uh, a man came to my room last night, uh, my quarters, uh, there over the over the row, and uh, he knocked on my door, and he asked, uh, he said that very word. He said, uh, did you go in the tomb of Guteros? And I said, uh, no, uh, we only ran past, just as I've told you. And, uh, um, and then he left. Well, it's very good that you said that. There's a good chance that you might not have been here speaking to us today. Should you have said anything else? Which would have been bad for us. Hmm. Guteros. Hmm. The name escapes me. I believe it's uh, a cheese. Hmm. Uh, perhaps named after, yes, this Guteros in question. Yeah. Invisible cheese. Invisible cheese. Invisible cheese. Hmm. I wonder what the alchemical workings of that would be. And he starts to scratch his chin. Hmm. Invisible cheese. He says, excuse Excuse me. He picks up his box of components. He says, I really must get to that meeting. Invisible cheese. Yeah, you can find it by its smell. Well, in one of um, my halfling's previous adventures, mm -hmm. he picked up some skull 
there's a whole room filled with skulls, and he picked up the skull, yeah. and each of the skulls like taught you, like you instantly knew all the stuff about a certain subject. Yeah. So he picked up one of these skulls, and now he knows all about human sacrifice rituals. Ooh, yeah. So, is mm -hmm. this Guthero's guy known as a sacrificer of humans? Mm. You have okay, so you you had a skull uh, from long ago invest in you magical knowledge of a certain subject, all of yeah. like, like a brain chip or something. Yeah. Cool. That's pretty freaky. Okay, yeah, then I'm just going to say, yeah, uh, Guterros, uh, Guterros perks your ears up. You recall distinctly. Give me a, uh, what do you, yeah, let's do a DC, I don't want to tell you the number, but give me like an intelligence check or something. Intelligence is okay. I got a 14. A 14? Okay, so yeah, all right. So you recall pretty clearly that uh, Guterros was a, as a nobleman probably about 2,500 years ago. Uh, rumored to be a wizard, and when he died, uh, many, many, uh, you know, many plebes died with him. Right? Oh. Yeah. There was a. It was a black time in, in, in the kingdom's history. Died in that they were entombed with him, or they were, there was like a plague or something, and everybody just died. Uh, he he purchased scores and scores and scores of slaves, and uh, each. Uh, each was used to either build the tomb that he was interred in or uh, went in with him and never came back out. Okay. Um, well, I will definitely share that with my noble companion here. Hmm. Um, What's your cleric's name again? Waro. Waro. Oh, yeah, okay, Waro. I'm sorry. I think I've played, played him before. Waro the cleric. He's neutral? Yep. Okay. And he was carousing. What was the nature of the carousing again? He was just out drinking or something? Um, it didn't, like, the table I used didn't say that. Yeah. I imagine he was probably, I imagine he was probably in a library and got into a fight. Oh, over what? Some librarians or something. Although he doesn't remember who. It was probably one of the patrons of the library who he got into the argument with, who challenged him to a duel. But he can't oh, yeah. remember. He was so absorbed in the books he was reading. Hmm. Okay, it was a it was a half glimpse figure behind a stack of books, right? Maybe a maybe a hood. Yeah, maybe reaching for the same book at the same time. Oh, what was the subject of the book? Do you recall? Well, he loves um, mysteries and riddles. Oh. So it was probably a book of like unexplained phenomena. Cool. For example, magical variety. Sure. For example, the uh, uh, the sudden existence of a of a giant tomb complex next to a sprawling magical tomb that, complex. That's such. That's exactly the kind of thing that's right up his alley. That's what he book, wants to know about. Book of Tempero uh, Chrono. No, wait a minute. Book of Tempero Spatial Mysteries. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So what? I mean, so you have that book now somewhere in your collection? I imagine. Is that how you got the extra experience point to get you? And maybe you discovered a magic user spell in there. Yep, that's cool. definitely what happened. Nice. It's all coming together now. Well, maybe you insulted somebody or uh, stopped somebody else's research. Yep. Gotcha. It's all coming together. The world is your oyster, gentlemen. You have the tomb of Guteros there. Uh, actually, in that runic language, the OS designation at the end is uh, genitive, meaning it's a uh, Gutero or somebody, somebody you know, like typically. I'm just gonna say Guteron was his name, right? The genitive means of, if you don't know the those bits of the language. Well, I think we should probably go and investigate the tomb. Yeah. I shall gather my lackeys. But I have stuff that needs carried, and I don't do that myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would like to make a brief pit stop at, at, at all local churches to get some holy water. Mm. Because that's oh, always a thing. I have some. How do much you? do you have? One. It's enough, right? <laughs> no. It's a big one. If there's a church, I definitely want to go get more. 
There's all all varieties and flavors of churches. Is there an Amantor church? A what? A church of Amantor, my cleric's god. It's probably a library. I mean, is there? I don't know. I've never thought of it before. Well, he will go to the mall directory and look it up. <laughs> See if it's there. You are here. <laughs> right. Ah, the big book of churches. Actually, Helix is not that big a town. It's, it's like a medium-sized medieval-level town. So I'm going to go with, uh, I mean, if there's a church if there's a church of uh, Amuntor in Helix, then you're probably there as a visitor or stationed there or part of the thing. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sure. I'll go. I'll go there and start scooping out uh, holy water and pouring into bottles. We're gonna that, need it. That war is always uh, okay. All right, they're, they're, you know, it that stuff doesn't grow on trees, right? Well, that's okay. I would definitely reimburse you for the cost of it. And when we're done, I'll come back and I'll help you sanctify some more. Yeah, the high, the head I accolade. Sanctify, you mean drinking beer or something and making holy water, right? That's how it's made, right? It's the process by which holy men. It must pass through. Men of holiness. That's right. Convert they convert uh, barley and hops and water into uh, the most potent of uh, holy chemicals. And the more yellow it is, the more potent it is, right? Uh, it's it's mineral content. I'm not sure. You know, they say well, vitamins. You guys stay on top of that stuff. Um, okay, so yeah, all right. Uh, so how many bottles of holy water do you take? Well, I'll just you? take three. I don't want to be greedy. One, two, three, right. Oh, there's other holy men coming and going. And, uh, yeah, I understand. You know, the, the city watch needs to hold off the undead troops to linger around the premises. Okay, uh, anybody else want to go and buy stuff anywhere? I uh, don't have terribly much money. I have all... Oh, I lie. I've got a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're a third level character, you start with. Uh, two I'm months. rolling in it. I'm buying myself some, Come. some mares. Some yeah, buy whatever you want. Put it on your thing and make sure that. Uh, I mean, you could get a wagon for treasure. You could get a couple of mules and a. I mean, I mean, since the booming of the barrel maze has come, I mean, you know, there's always men at arms willing to guard tents and. And camps and that kind of stuff. Quite common. Well, I'm a noble, so I am. I'm. I have no flipping idea what any of this stuff needs, which is why I have got the eclectic bunch with me that I have with me. Yeah, well, uh, if you're a noble, I hear with them. If you're a noble and a wizard, is one of these? Uh, oh, is Bubba Tohep your, your like your squire or attendant or something? Or? Well, they're all my attendants. They just don't know that. They're, oh right, okay. Uh, I mean, they, you could have a history. Have a, of he's the royal astrologer. There you go. Yeah. Oh, the royal astrologer. Okay. Right. Well, he's, he's mine. I borrowed him. Right. Told your dad or, or your mom or whatever. I'm, I'm borrowing. I'm borrowing Bubba. Bubba's coming with us. Yeah. Oh yeah. I actually don't think I told anybody I was leaving. Bubba knows that this time of year, uh, the walls between realities are very thin, and the past intrudes on the present. When uh, Aldebaran is high in the sky, the Biaki course through the sky, screaming and causing children to. Search out candy for sucker. That's how uh, when the Migo take the heads, they always leave the head of the person directly in the porch. And that's how we get the pumpkin. People don't know that, but that's how it goes. So Angledink is going to ask Burdock, as a man who has obviously had some experience adventuring, what required, what we need. Is new to this whole adventuring shenanigans. Um, and money's not a problem. Hmm. Well, let's start off with the basics. Are you wearing armor? Do you have good armor under those clothes? Armor? Armor? I'm a wizard. I don't wear armor. Um, you could, actually. The penalties aren't that bad uh, for a wizard. Well, it, it's, that's entirely... It clashes different. with the purple. I'm not going to pressure you, but if you're not at the armor type, um, how about a weapon? Well, I have this wonderful, wonderful staff here, which obviously signifies that I'm a wizard of great power. Mm -hmm. I also have a sling for killing squirrels, because I hate the tree rat bastards. And I've got this beautiful longsword, which was gifted to me. 
Mm. Well, here are some classic items you may want. Um, number one, a lantern. It's always good to have. Oh, good. I can give that to the dwarf. Yes, and some oil to go with it and or to throw at people to oh, set them on fire. To the dwarf. Um, you should have some rope. Because the dwarf. Yes, it's important. What else? Um, you really don't need that much stuff. It's just that when you get in there in the thick of it, you'll remember something you wish you had. <laughs> I don't really carry that much on me personally. So like more dwarfs, right? Yes. If only we brought a band of dwarves to bust this wall down for us as quietly as possible. Well, you know, I have one dwarf. Isn't there another two dwarfs in town who did go down there? We should go and hire those. No? Yes? Oh, if you, oh yeah. If, yeah, I mean... If you don't mind commanding them, then please... Oh, absolutely! I love to command. It's like my second favorite... There have been, there have been two dwarves mentioned, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's my second favorite thing. There was a... Uh, I forget what his name was. Did I write it down? I didn't write it down. Anybody recall? Uh, Trudgy was the short dwarf. Trudgy. Yeah, I did put that there. Trudgy and also uh, a nameless one who uh, didn't get along well with uh, the Squidgy Bert, the uh, cut purse. Yeah, so it's, I'm no problem. Dwarfs take kindly to... They, they require structure in the sure. right. and they and need the direction... They practically beg to be hired, right? Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. yes. Especially for a mission like this into the, the unknown where there's lots of stonework. We should totally hire them and turn them into meat shields. Yeah, sure. That's the right term, isn't it? Meat shields? Uh, uh, yeah, but, I mean, you know, it's pejorative. You probably don't want to... I mean, you could. I mean, use it as you like. But... Shields of meat. <laughs> if you go into the uh, hirelings guild and you say, we'd like to borrow some meat, uh, hire some meat shields, uh, you, also, you always get a good response that way. <laughs> Alright, so what do you think? Should we hire these dwarfs who are already in the area? They know the area. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, there's uh, Trudgy, and uh, it turns out that uh, Trudgy's buddy, um, uh, well, uh, his name is uh, Wenceslas, Wenceslas, and, uh, you know, they're sort of a... Uh, Wenceslas was a... Uh, I did say he was a bald one from down yep. below, right? He's, uh, he's like a a dwarger, a deep dwarf, or whatever, that variety. Um, pretty dour, taciturn, taciturn? I'm not even sure how to say it, but I know that the word is. Um, Trudgy, he's a standard run-of-the-mill dwarf, right? You know, big beard, uh, pickaxe, or whatever, horns on his helmet. And then the other variety, he's, uh, he's somewhat darker, gray skin, uh, you know, full black eyes, right, that, uh, that shine in the darkness. Um, People don't, uh, he's a little spooky for the folks around Helix, so they don't like him very much. But uh, they both, uh, they put their heads together and uh, whisper a little bit and uh, said, Done, uh, we'll come with you for for 10% uh, of the take. Mm. 10%. Mm. Yeah. The cash equivalent. The cash equivalent of 10% of the take. Right. Sure. And first pick of, uh, first pick of the jewels. First pick of the non-magical jewels, sure. Done! He goes, <laughs> sticks out his hand. Okay, I suppose so. I can always kill you in your sleep. <laughs> That's <laughs> royal humor. He says, ah, I was just about to say the same. <laughs> it's funny how that works. I wasn't. Here, have some beer. <laughs> All right, so give the list of the equipment that you need, and I'll buy it for you. Uh, it comes out of your take, by the way. If you return it to me, I'll give you 50% back. Yeah, that's fair terms. I'm not running a charity here. Agreed. Oh, and if you die, we can bring your body back to town. Did you say you can or can't? Oh, yes, we can bring your body back to town. Okay, that's fair. Fair enough, right. He says, if I, if I die, <laughs> eh, eh, more than you have said that, young, and, young master. But what happened to the fighter that was with you? Oh, uh, they both quail a little bit, yeah, Ulrich, yeah. Uh, he'd been in his cups. Mm. 
He's an impetuous one, Alaric was. Uh, it was him what got us hired. Mm. And he didn't make it back, did he? Uh, well, he uh, he handed X and uh, Tomas a sack of uh, harpy feathers, and he said, I'll take care of this, and he turned and uh, that was the last we heard of him. Okay. Mm. His, his widow is a fine young lass, seamstress. Mm. She took out an insurance policy before we left, so she'll be fine. Well, as long as you give us a list of the gear that we need, we should go and purchase it. Really? And then um, you can lead us towards danger. Uh, we'll leave this afternoon, if you like, your, uh, your lordship. And, uh, uh, the details with the cleric there. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so they pass you a thing. A uh, young boy comes and takes the list, and he goes off to the brokerage. He comes back with a package deal of uh, whatever equipment that you like. Plus, uh, you know, um, let's say one uh, one reincarnation uh, of your choice on any member that might die, and that'll come to 20% uh, of the take, or a one-time fee of uh, 700 gold, which they'll be able to lend to you at 20%. Uh, oh, I can pay that. 700? Okay. Yeah, I can pay the 700. It's worth it just to be able to resurrect somebody. Yeah, uh, okay. not... Not resurrect. <laughs> what is it? He said not resurrect. There's no one in town that can do a resurrection. Well, what is the thing he said? Uh, reincarnate. Oh, reincarnate. Sure. Uh, what, what's know. happened in the past is that uh, this is, is it the Temple of Justicia. Uh, what's happened in the past is that uh, out of the clinging white mist that surround Helix these days, uh, something wanders out, and it has the personality of uh, the slab of meat that was on the table. Right. So, um, I'll sometimes it's a centaur. Sometimes it's an elf. Sometimes it's an eagle. You never can tell. But it's almost always lawful. Interestingly enough, since that's how Justicia works these days. Afternoon approaches. Mug it. Mug it. All right. As a uh, it's, let's say that it's 4 o'clock as you approach, and uh, there's a man... Okay, you're all... you got your cart. There's a, the, the Adventurer's Guild threw in two, uh, two men-at-arms, uh, Rufus and uh, Randall, right? And uh, they've come along to... Uh, they're, they're bonded completely to guard the cart and make sure that nothing comes to kill your, uh, your mules and take the cart away while you're delving. And, um, all right... Uh, your cart is in the track. You're headed towards the barrel maze, and uh, out of the shadows of a side street, a gentleman steps out. He's wearing a hooded, uh, a hooded black robe, and uh, it's clear that he's got some uh, tattoos all over his arms, right? And uh, behind him, there's a couple of. Uh, I keep using the word swarthy, but I really don't mean it in a in a racist way. I mean it in a color way. Swarthy. A couple of swarthy, uh, you know, bandage-looking men with uh, parts missing on their faces and stuff. They've, they're clear they have some sort of rot or plague or something. And they're all holding long knives. And uh, that's it. He uh, he stands in front of the card. He says, hold, let me speak to the cleric world. Okay. Mm. What is it you want? Oh, you don't remember, eh? Well, I meet I meet many people. In the stacks. I meet many people in the stacks. I spend most of my life. The book. Which you'd find uh, in multitudes in the libraries where I spend most of my time. No, the book that I was going for. I need it. Yeah. The one that you have. The one that you took out of the stacks. Well, what what is it you'll give me for it? Hmm. Give you. Huh. He turns and he whispers something to the uh, group of three thugs there. Thugs they are, right? Chris Knives, Plague. You know, you don't want to get in these these guys. One, two, three. Right. He says. Uh, he whispers something, and uh, one of the one of the more um, leprous chaps steps forward. He says, uh, "We'll take the book." Holy man, do do as you will, but leave us the book first, or there'll be trouble for you. 
And that's from the guild. Uh, which guild would this be? The guild of diseased uh, beggars? <laughs> right, yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the thieves guild, sub guild of leprous, uh, leprous thieves or something, right? Yeah. There you go. Uh, the lepers, <laughs> the leprous, uh, I came in. Sorry, T's wearing on the floor now, where it's going too hard now. The leprous, uh, the leprous gutter, gutter snipe skilled. <laughs> hold on, Engelding, Engelding takes a moment and then look, looks around at the clerk and says, hold on a moment. And, and he speaks to the guy forward and says, this is the first time you've done this, isn't it? Uh, we don't get paid much, your lordship. You've never, ever, actually, ever tried to attack someone before, ever. No, we ain't, but he, he points behind you and he says, but our pals have, and there's like, you know, a towering half-work, right? He's well, in a... Uh... You know that you're doing this all wrong, right? <laughs> Who, me? You or... issued a challenge to him, but you're using your other men to back you up. It's meant to be a duel. It's mano a mano. One on one, you against him. And yet there you are, standing blurring, fluffing up the name of your own guild, Whatever it is, and and you're making a mess of the whole damn thing. Now, take a moment, breathe, deep breath, start again. Start with, you have the book I want. Try with me. You have the book I want. Follow. Try again. Now, uh, the the man that you're addressing, he's uh he stepped off back in the shadows and he's watching, like this, right? You see the tattoos on his arms, uh, quite clearly. Snake cult, something. That's just bloody rude. You try to help a man do his job right. The uh, the half work says, the book, governor. Just give him the book and go about your business. Um, uh, excuse me. One, two, three. <clears throat> They've got bandages on. Uh, the half work doesn't, uh, but there's a dwarf that does. And uh, the warrior uh, on the left, or the right of the half orc, he's actually missing uh, one arm, and uh, he's on a crutch. But he does have an axe. So one-legged axeman. Gentlemen, do you have insurance? Listen, uh, we're just doing this for the money so we can have the temple lay hands on us. Just give the man the book. We won't well, ask you. Do you again. have insurance? Mm, look, we've got insurance, Bert. The dwarf shrugs. That's and enough talk. That, and that's when I turn around to the dwarfs and, and the guys and say, uh, oil and fire, if you don't mind, gentlemen. Oh, these are your, oh you are, you're just going to bust into it now? <laughs> Damn straight. You know. okay. I'm tell, telling my guys to throw oil and fire on these guys. Okay. Bear with me just one second. Roll uh, D6. Two, three. Right. One, two, three. Don't look at those results, by the way. And then, oh. then, then look at anything. Can't see a thing. All oh, right, you don't have that plug in, eh? Oh, wait a minute. Roll D10. Oh, accurate. Five, two. I'm gonna cast blessing once this thing kicks off. Okay, so everybody, uh, before before any melee start or anything, uh, yeah, you can do. All right, oil and fire, right? <laughs> well, that, they've got bandages on. Right, yeah. You'll probably you'll probably be doing them a favor if you yeah, like. Well, them. yeah. I try to be nice and Leprosy is it. such a terrible disease. I mean, yeah, try to be nice about it. Yeah. Okay, so blew me off. All right. Yeah, Everybody you, within five feet of me gains a holy blessing. Everybody, everybody within five feet of you. So that's your your whole group, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much everyone within five feet of me, and I'm on the cart, so they get. Use bonus all attack rolls. Blah 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 blah. The bonus is equal to this. So it's all right. So you get a plus five to pretty much everything for a turn. For a turn? Yeah, for okay. ten minutes. Ten minutes. Well, that should be over pretty quick. Yep. All right. Then you know, uh, I think probably we'll we'll do one round and we'll decide what happens after that. Okay. All right. 
everything pauses, right? People on the street uh, seem to be taking notice that something, uh, you know, fairly regular but still unpleasant is about to go down. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, there's a, a hue and a cry. that fight, 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 call the guards. And, like, you know, billet, you know, standard villager people, like, ah, screaming, you know, mothers sweep up their children and, and get out of the way, right? Um, so there you go. Uh, declare your actions and roll your d20s. Um, do it, we'll do it by player instead of by, by character because that'll be irritating. All right. I got a 13 for me. Oh, uh, for initiative? Yeah. I got a 20. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Um, <laughs> I got to roll a d20 here. Add, add your best agility score from the group. And oh, seriously? Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's still going to be like a zero. Yeah, I still have a zero, so I'm on. No, I got a, I got a one. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. What's your total? Uh, give me a second. I'll roll the dice. I'm still... Oh, roll the dice. Roll. Oh, natural 20 there, baby. I got a 21. Wow. Yeah, you guys are really going to put hurting on these uh, leprous hobos. <laughs> Maybe not the half work, but the leprous hobos, definitely. Okay. So uh, do what you will. All right. Well, um... three scurvy-looking uh, hobos in front of you and a slightly better group of uh, more seasoned uh, people behind you, a dwarf, a warrior... And a half look. All right. Um, I'll tell you what. Why doesn't the cleric go first then? Because uh, I was gonna have I was gonna have some guys lob the oil and fire. And then well, I'm that's what go. he did. Was he cast the spell. he cast the blessing? Yeah. All right, he cast blessing. That's All right, so it's me then. All right. So uh, let's have the guys on the car lob oil and fire at uh, those guys, mm -hmm. and then my henchies are gonna move off. Um. So staff, Clarence, and those guys are going to move off the cart just in case. So they're going to, they're going to get off the cart and move around the side. Mm -hmm. and I am going to let's just have a quick look at this. Yeah, yeah. Th throw that oil, baby. See what happens to those guys. And then I'm I'm I've got okay. a plan. Okay, give me a D twenty or whatever, and uh, do it. That's a 12. Okay. Plus so, 5. Plus right. 5. Yeah. Right. You're aiming at uh, that. You got the half work, the the one, the, uh, the the hobbling warrior with a wooden a peg leg, or are you aiming at the, the the dwarf? Let's take a peg leg up. Okay. Yeah, his leg will burn probably too. Right? Oh, I want I want the whole thing to burn. <laughs> okay. So yeah, hits him squarely. He's coated and. He's coated in slippery oil, right? Uh, a look of horror dawns on his face, like. How, how were, did you propose to light it by? Oh, then somebody else is throwing a torch on. Yeah, a lit torch in the middle of the afternoon in a in a crowded city street. Well, we'll light one in a minute. I mean, even if he's not, you know. Okay, okay yeah. hold on. He, he, he's he's on oil. He's got oil on him. Throw another thing of oil on the other guy. You don't okay. have to light it, but they'll scare the, you know to scare the crap out of them. Right, yeah, he's he's definitely uh, got his ears perked up. He's All right. Oil. So throw oil at the other guy as well. Throw oil at the dwarf now. The dwarf, okay. Seventeen for that. Seventeen, okay. The oily bird, the dwarf is now oiled, right? Yeah. Uh, you, now your dwarfs, Trudgy and uh, Wenceslas, they said they were going to meet you on the way out of town. Uh, so we don't have them right now. No, they're not. On the, That's fine. So. So these are the two guys on the cart throwing oil, which is fine. Okay. So yeah, uh, seventeen. That that dwarf is oiled. Yeah, he's uh, he wipes the oil out of his eye, right? And he flicks up a hand crossbow and he goes, "Toing." No, wait a minute. That, now that's just a response, though. I'm I'm going on thirteen. Is everybody? Well, uh, I haven't I haven't even finished yet. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So. Well, my cleric's going to commando roll off the back of the cart and begin to sneak, for which he gets a 22 on his sneak roll. A sneak roll? Broad day, okay. Broad well, day he's trying two. to like use the barrels and things in the environment to hide behind. Okay, so he's sort of flanking or something? He's going to try to get to the guy that was talking. Like oh, the guy yeah, that demanded yeah. the book. Right, yeah. That, the, uh, yeah. And he's while he's doing that... I'm going to cast Rope Work. 
Oh, nice. Okay. So, right. on on the orc, see if I can contain him. Like, like that kind of thing. Yeah, but because rope work, I can if I can cast this and it works pretty good, then it can end up rearranging okay. and, and five to spell checks. Too. Summoning them. Yeah, that may yeah. be worth a worth a shot. Yeah. Here we go. I get a fifteen. I summon it using existing rope or summoned rope. I can command the rope to arrange itself into any shape. <laughs> it takes one d four rounds to arrange itself. All right. Okay. So so the rope starts snaking its way off of the cart slowly towards the orc. Yeah, like a snake or something through yeah. the mud and horse shit and. It starts making its way towards him. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm going to draw that here. Okay, yeah, he takes a step back. Like He's a, he's got a big, mean-looking club with lots of nails sticking out of it, right? Yeah, he kicks the mud at the at the rope that's working its way towards him. Okay? <clears throat> I know exactly what I'm doing with that next, next round. Beautiful. All right. Uh, anybody else that I'm missing? Is that all four? You had two other henchies that were about to do stuff? The henchies are just moving off the cart so that they are, uh, they're, they're getting ready to attack should they need to. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that's me then. Okay, so the dwarf flicked up a uh, crossbow, right? Um, I'll do them, and then we'll say that... Uh, all right. I'm going to check these off as I go. The orc will be last because he's, he's big and burly. So um, roll D16 for these guys. They're cruddy minions. 12. Um, who's on the card again? And who threw the oil? What's two guys. The two... Um, the two. My, my cleric's up there too, but he's not getting... Like, he's not right up front. Uh, Rufus and Randall are on the cart, and I'm sitting behind them, obviously, because I don't right, I don't walk right. right. Rufus and Randall, yeah, they're, uh, they're driving the cart, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, so that would leave... There's a dwarven stonemason, astrologer, Clarence. Your cleric, uh, Whirl, was like maneuvering through the, the barrels trying to get it. No, to he's on the cart. My halfling's sneaking. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, I'll just roll a d4 then, right? Um, 12 is it, uh, would be a hit on Bobby, the hood. Shit, yes. Okay. The hand crossbow for four, three hit points worth of damage. Oh, he's dead. Uh, <laughs> hits him in the in the throat. That's a shame. Bobby had some potential. No, oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Uh, yeah, he's dead. I think. Uh, naturally. Yeah, just dead. Bollocks. Three. Oh well, that's a good. That's a good shot. Okay, so describe for me how Bobby dies. Painfully. Right. Ah, does he say anything important or notable? <laughs> he goes, "Tell my mama, I uh, <clears throat> top of the world to you, ma." Man, something. Yeah, he falls back on the cart. Right. Horses are a little bit skittish when uh, somebody dies in the back of the cart. Well, you know, he was conceived on horseback, so he was. <laughs> well, he would have been awesome up. Uh, he got into combat because he had a bloody 18 strength. How fitting! He was conceived on horseback and died, died in the horseback. back of a mule cart. Yeah, hmm, it's too bad. It's beautiful in a way. Um, okay, so that leaves the uh, half work. He's he's uh, sort of stamping at the rope, and he's uh, he's gonna like put his foot on the rope and cock back his club and smack at the. Uh, it leaves a cleric and somebody else on the thing, but uh, we won't go for the cleric first on this. He goes for a d20. That's a 11 on uh, whoever the henchy is. It's the other henchy that's in the back of the cart. Um, that would be either Clarence, Bubba, or or uh, Staff. I don't. I'm not sure which one. Let me. I'll, I'll, oh, it would have been Clarence. Clarence. Okay. Save. He's a miss. Okay, good. All right, and then uh, let's see. Stumpy the warrior, he's uh, he's he's still freaked out. He's like getting the oil out of his eyes and everything. And then there's three, uh, three plague-ridden. That's a two and a twelve, 
and a seven. So uh, the middle, the middle, the sort of taller, uh, more, more complete rascal sort of grabs the, uh, he grabs the reins on the on the horse or the mule or something. He goes pow, and he smacks it right on the ass, right? And the horse, the cart lurches, boom. So you're, uh, you're all of a sudden you're traveling down the road, right? And uh, Rufus and Randall will check on the next turn to see if they can get the uh, the cart back under control. But right now you're moving. To bosh on their plans. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, not moving fast. Just, uh, I mean, they're only mules or whatever. But uh, the other guys sort of latch onto the thing as you're going past. But uh, they're not having any luck getting in there. So let me put a little running marks. Yep. <laughs> All right. So that's my turn. That's Back okay. to the top, which would mean you, um, Jason. All right. Well, that uh, that rope is still moving by itself, so mm -hmm. it's eventually going to spell out the word "boo." That's what it was going to do. <laughs> All uh, right. So it's sort of it's sort of twisting around in the mud, right? Yeah, with the, it's still, with the... it, it works for like three rounds, so right. it's going to be going for three rounds, and then eventually spell the word "boo." I mean, the, the plan was to like scare the crap out of them. The other guys have got oil, so we were on the back of this this car. So hold on, they've got to roll. So they're gonna roll a check. Well, they get a they get a plus five on this. Ha ha! Mm -hmm. All right, that's a fourteen for the first one, and fifteen for the second. Regain control of the car. car. Rufus, yeah, okay, right, yeah, they're, uh, they're they're skitters, but they're not they're not out of control. Um, so we're on the back of this car. That sucks. All right, we're just moving along. These guys are chasing us. <laughs> no, I mean it, it brings you to about the level where. I mean, you know, it only moved a couple of feet, but it brings you to about the level where these, like, leprous uh, knife-wielding thugs can just sort of hop on the back of the cart. Oh, get you. Great. Um, which one smacked the horse? Uh, the tallest one. Uh, I'm going to call him Lev. Is that the orc? No, it was no. Not. no. All right, there's a group of uh, leprous gangsters up front and uh, some more experienced thugs in the back. All right, All right well, in that case... Engeldink is going to use his sword, mm -hmm. and he's just going to wait down on one of these guys. Okay. Except he doesn't have... What's my dice for that? You want me to roll for you? No, I've got it. I just need to know what it is, because I'm not going to get a d20 on this, because I'm not skilled enough. Am I? Yeah, it's a standard d d20, I think. All right, well... Well, let's do this. I got a plus six overall. So. Well, if you're you're attacking the leper guys jumped on the cart. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. Attack, so we can clear them off the cart. Well, my cleric's gonna like yell out and ask you that. He's gonna try to preempt you by casting a spell on these dudes. All right, we're gonna go for it. I can hold. All right. So the cleric leaps across the cart, gets a natural twenty, um, plus five, plus his spell bonus, which is a 28, and he touches one of the dudes. Okay. Um, blah, 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 blah. All right, and essentially, this the spell result says the cleric can lead a prayer in which up to four other people can participate. All creatures praying must link hands, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I'm going to grab the guy's hand as I cast um, Neutralize Poison and Disease on him, hmm. curing him of his afflictions. Nice. And the result I got gets all of them. And I'm going to, as I'm praying to uh, Amantor and invoking the spirits, I'm going to tell him to grab his friend's hand and then he will be healed as well if, he, if the other guy grabs his hand. Nice. Yeah, I mean, how could a uh, how could a command that's literally falling apart turn down uh, a gift like that? Um, all right, neutralize poison or disease. And what was the result? It was a 28, which oh. is in the 26 to 29 range. Okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, just, so I mean, you're waving your hands, uh, asking for Amantor's blessing. Yep. Cure this uh, unworthy fellow of his affliction. Yeah. Yes. Right? There's a clap of thunder. <laughs> right? And uh, the clouds above part. Yeah, and it seems as if a ray of sunshine 
beams down, and you know, unworthy though they are, these three fellows stand mystified as uh, you know, oh my God, I have a nose again, right? Yeah. Um, the ongoing villagers all stop in their tracks, right? They're <gasps> oh my God, a miracle, a miracle, a holy man, and they all start pointing, yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, Lev. Uh, Lev holds up his hands, and where he was missing fingers before, he uh, he uh, he drops his knife in the mud, and uh, he pulls off the the you know the greasy sort of slimy oozing shroud that was on his face, and he you know he feels around. And he's like my nose. He says, oh, "Thank you, sir. Thank you." And he he gets down in the mud, and he says, "What what god did this?" Uh, Amator, god of Mysteries and riddles. Wow. Yeah. So he's uh, he's he he bursts into tears and his 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 buddies pick him up and uh, said, uh, I won't forget this. Uh, we'll we'll never forget this. And we'll we'll sing your praises all over the back alleys of of Helix and yeah, they run they run off right. Okay. Um, Stumpy the warrior and uh, half work and uh, Bert the dwarf are relatively unimpressed, right? And yep. Bert is a uh, Cocking his crossbow. My halfling is continuing towards the guy that demanded the book. Okay. Give me like Speaking. a sneak roll or something. Sure. Speaking. Yeah. He gets a modified thing. Um, 13. Modified 13. Okay. That's a d20 modified 13. Yeah. Mm, okay. So, yeah, uh, you're almost upon him, and you see that uh, he pulls out what appears to be like a pocket watch, right? He flips it open. And uh, he, uh, he's pretty clear that he's, uh, he's unimpressed with these proceedings. So he, uh, he shakes his head and he starts to back away down the alley. Well, that's even better. All right. He's going to get it. Engeldink is going to cast Magic Shield on himself. Mm-hmm. Okay, go for it. Oh, this is going to be terrible. Uh, his side effect is Accidental Alchemist. Oh, so sweet. Something nearby turns to lead and something nearby turns to gold. Beautiful. <clears throat> What could go wrong? Ooh, 22. One thing turns to lead and one thing turns to gold? Oh, yep. Okay. Oh, I got a plus four bonus. Oh, sweet. And, and I can also apply it stuff. to one of my ally. Oh, I can apply, the, uh, can apply it to myself or one ally touch. I'm going to apply it to myself right now. This is a magic shield, you said? Yep. Okay. Uh, so uh, what turns to lead, then? Ooh, um, <laughs> the um, the the peg leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, it's got uh, yeah. And then, and, oh no 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 oh no sorry. Can oh, I, you can, okay, you can only pick one. You can either pick what turns to lead or what turns to gold. All right, I will change the crossbow. Its whole entire mechanism changes to um, changes to gold. Changes to gold? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, yeah. Uh, okay, there's a, let's say there's a pigeon that was flying above, right? Right? All of a sudden, ding! It embeds itself in the, uh, in the deck of the, uh, of the mule cart, right? Um, one wing outstretched. It doesn't handle strain well. Is it gold or, or lead? Gold. That, that, I've changed the crossbow mechanisms to, to gold. Right. Well, it won't fire, but I'm saying there's a there was a pigeon in the sky that uh, just out now turned into a leaden pigeon, right? And embedded itself in the deck of the cart, right? Chunk, right? Um, okay. Sorry, things happen. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, uh, these things occur. Sure. Um, so that was Jason, and then Chris. We both did. did I, I'm, I'm missing something. Anybody? Yeah, I put my hand shoes. Yeah. Right. Go for it. All right, so Staff, Stone Slammer, is going to charge forward with his hammer. Mm -hmm. um, and he's actually going for... Yeah, he's actually going to go for the, uh, the peg leg. Okay. So he's going to swipe for the peg leg with that. Let's see what he gets. Comes in, swinging that, and he gets, he gets a 15. Okay, that's it, yeah. All right, tries to knock that guy down to the ground. Does 1d4 damage on that. 
<laughs> One point of damage. Nice. Bing! So maybe, uh, yeah. So four points of damage and oil, yeah? Yep. Well, I think if he falls, he's covered in oil, so he's going to be slippy slidey all over the place. Yeah, sure. Well, it's a muddy street, yeah. Uh, Bubba, Ho Bubba Tohep is going to run forward. Yeah. Uh, man, he's, he's so hosed. He's rubbish. <laughs> He's, he's the court astrologer. Maybe, uh, maybe your father sent him. So he's actually gonna throw his dagger. He's throwing his dagger at the door. Okay. His, his lone dagger. Wow, that slick cut. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. What's his trade good? I'm curious. Hmm. What's his trade good that was generated? His he has a spyglass. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Um. Wow, well, that was rubbish. He, um. He gets a ten. So that's a that's a rough rubbish. Mm -hmm. So his dagger goes wide, probably. A that's ten? still including the plus five, right? Yeah, that was how bad it was. Uh, no, that hits. Yeah, that hits. He's a. Uh, I mean, he's he's not very mobile, and also he's he's not armored either. For one point of damage. One point of damage with the dagger. Yeah, he raises. He cuts well, his cheek or something. Again, it's plus five. To oh, the, oh, plus five. the plus yeah. five to everything. Yeah, as well. Well, it's not to everything. There's a specific list, and damage is one of them. All right. Well, in that case, that it's plus six, it's six points of damage to the uh, to the um to the peg leg then as well. Yeah. The god the god directs this uh, slightly wide. Uh, it, it seems as if the the arc of the knife corrects itself in the air, and it goes chunk. It's right in the middle of his forehead. Amantor is putting on a show. Right. It's a mystery. He's trying to convert people. Yeah. In the middle of the street, right? They'll they'll sing the praises of Amentor, right? Yeah. Dor Bert the dwarf goes down with a, uh, a dull alchemy, uh, like an athame or something, right? Right in his forehead, right? Chunk, <laughs> right? All right, and uh, Clarence is going to run forward with his staff, mm -hmm. screaming loudly as he tries to um, attack the orc because he's stupid. Right. Well, you know, that's good. Go for it. That's a fifteen. That's a hit. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, he's, he's got, like, he's got leather armor or something. Uh, that's going to be six points of damage there. Oh, right. Right. That, uh, you hit him right in the face, right? His nose is bloodied and broken, and, uh, uh, Torg, uh, Torg's looking at this, uh, magic rope under his boot, and, uh, he's wiping the blood out of his eyes and his teeth and everything. He, uh, he picks up uh, Bert's body, right? And he said, that's enough of it. It's Stumpy, I'm done. And uh, he runs off. Um, and uh, Stumpy uh, says, uh, yeah, nothing personal, uh, your honors. And uh, he turns around and he starts uh, stumping through the mud, right? Um, you hear uh, Kurt, um, not you, but rather uh, Burdock the Dyer hears uh, cursing in the alleyway, right? And uh, the muttering of some incantation. Okay. Yeah. If it is the next round, it is. Then I, mean, I know. Yeah, go for it. Slightly out of order, but the the halfling is following this guy. Uh huh. Yeah. So he is going to attack him. Oh well, you get there just in time to see that uh, the man, uh, the man that's behind the cloak, right? The cloak sinks into the the muddy alleyway, right? There's a couple of strumpets and. Uh, Maybe some laborers looking on, you know, like cleaning up and barrels, and, you know, typical alleyway uh, riffraff. And uh, the man sort of turns, like, the, the thing, you know, his cloak goes down, like, and sort of greasy black smoke is coming out, and uh, and all of a sudden, like, a uh, uh, this, this, this weird chimera sort of flits out. Can right. he get an attack off on it as it tries to fly away? Uh, you could try. I mean, yeah. I mean, it would take he a little will, stroke of luck, right? He, well, he will leap at it. He has a holy weapon. A, a holy weapon? This thing looks unholy. Oh, yeah, okay. So, well... He, had this, he has the snake cult uh, tattoos on his arm, man. Yeah, right, sure. definitely evil, right? Yeah, almost certainly. All right. Well, then he gets a modified number. He gets a modified 16 to hit. Mm-hmm. Does that hit? Uh, you mean with a weapon, or are you grabbing it? No, it's a weapon. He's okay. hitting it with a hammer. Oh, okay. So a holy hammer or something. Yeah. Yeah, the thing uh, goes... 
and it falls into the mud, and it looks like it's a like it's a bat with a uh, instead of where a bat's body would be, there's like a cobra, right? And it's got instead of regular cobra eyes, it's got insectile segmented eyes, right? And it like it goes, it hisses at you for a moment, and and, and rears back. Um, that's thirteen points of damage with a hammer. Holy schnickies! Wow, that's pretty good. Um. He's hmm. strong, and it does extra damage versus evil things. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, 13 points of damage, huh? Yep. Yeah, the thing, uh, you know, it's flapping one sickly black wing in the mud, you know, leathery type thing, right? It just Burrow's, seems like... Burrow's just going to run down the alley just to make sure that if uh, help is needed... Okay. Right, yeah. I mean... Uh, the combat's effectively over. Do it, or you can keep smashing this thing. Whatever you like. Well, I'll keep smashing it. It's even. Okay. Um, yeah. In short, in short order, the thing is uh, pulped into a into a pulpy, pulpy mess. All right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Gross. All that remains is a uh, is a cloak. Sort of rough spun. Right. Died poorly. I mean, you could tell that burdock. I mean, maybe, maybe the poor workmanship of the dying uh, added strength to your blow or something. Yeah, that's. It, it's clearly dead. Yeah, totally dead. It's right. like a greasy spot in the mud. You hit it hard enough the first time that uh, it was pretty close to death. Okay. Yeah, well, good. Well, I guess you resolve that a uh, little bit of uh, animosity. Did Question. you happen to know that man? I run into so many people. Um, it's not uncommon for people to, uh, for tempers to rise in the library. You know how it is. Right. That search for knowledge can no, get competitive. I don't share my books with anybody else. I have my own bloody library. <laughs> this is yeah, powder. But, yeah, the, the, the way out of town on Powder Keg Row, you're talking about a, a duel that started up in a library over a, a book about yeah. temporal, chrono, spatial anomalies. Yeah, I wonder why that guy wanted that book. I guess we'll never know. Perhaps he was a doctor. Maybe so. He was a time. Maybe he was interested in time traveling surgery or something. I'm glad I don't have to sort it out now because he's 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 dead as a as dead can be. Or is he? Dun 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 dun. dun, dun. Who is he working for? That's the that's the question. Well, he could even pronounce who he was bloody working for. Right. All right, so third so chap, shall we continue on? Mm-hmm. I, you I cause a, a series of minor miracles. Escaping. Give these ruffians their uh, comeuppance. Um, let's say that uh, as uh, as the evening approaches, you come across the Barrow Mound complex, and sure enough, in addition to the regular stone path, right, the, uh, the moor stretches out. You know, even even in the late afternoon. Well, I always go synchronous, you know, co-synchronous with the the season that, that I'm in. So it's cold and grim here. So it's cold and grim there with uh with fog, right? And uh, not just fog, like dense fog. But you can see you can see as you approach the the Barrow Mound complex, you know, just this just this big stone head that uh, that the, these these gentlemen were talking about. It's sort of like like this, like, you know, uh, I'll go down the camera like... And strangely, it's a feminine head, too, but it doesn't have any hair. It's just does a it, feminine stone head. Does it look like possibly someone is screaming in pain, or is it anger? Yeah, I mean, that's the face, yeah, sure. Um, let's just say uh, screaming like... Um, screaming like they'd just been, you know, hit or something like that. You know, like in pain or so, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can see that there's runes etched in it, but uh, it's one of those things where, I mean, these runes are from thousands of years ago. How far is the head from the uh, the mound? It's sort of like cocked at the top, right? Underneath, right? And then sort of pitched forward into the side. And then uh, there's the entrance that goes into the ground. And then, you know, a couple of... Uh, pillars in the in the soft earth, sort of willy nilly, um, you know, three on each side. Is the uh, entrance to the mound actually open, or is it closed? 
Yeah, it's wide open. It's wide open. Uh, it looks like, you know, the usual barrel mount things are usually, like, plugged up with a slab, but this doesn't fit the normal pattern. I mean, it's not even plugged up. It's just a hole in the ground. It looked like maybe a long time ago there was some iron grating, but that's rusted or been torn away or something. Um, Waro is going to cast Detect Evil mm. so that um, maybe we'll get a, well, some warning if evil things try to get us. It's the barrel maze. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. yeah, but if, if one's coming out of the shadows, maybe it'll tell us. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, what's your result? My result is the cleric is immediately aware of all evil creatures and objects with 180 feet. In addition, evil creatures and objects shine with a faint, unearthly glow that is obvious to the cleric's allies. And it lasts for six turns. So it lasts for an hour. 180 feet, eh? Um, yeah, it was in a twenty. It was a twenty result modified. Okay, 180 feet. I gotta do some conversions because this is an English thing and it's in meters. Give me just a moment. Okay. Two, 2.5 meters, that's like 6, 7 feet or something? You could call it 60 meters, I think, would yeah. be... Close to by three, you'll be fine. So yeah. I got about 30 squares here on my map here. Essentially, a meter is very close to a yard. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you feel the, the distinct presence of... Uh, it looks like... Oh, the whole place is coursing with evil, of course, but you sense, yeah. you sense a big uh, menacing entity... Yeah, obviously, right? Sort of. Uh, if you were to draw a line into the into the mound from from the head, like directly back into the center, yeah, yeah. There's there's a big big blob back there. Something something that wants to take your soul into the nine hells. Yeah, and then you know various uh, various evil, you know, petty creatures, sort of you know bobbing to and fro, uh, you know, sort sort of. Um, milling around, yeah, half half heartedly, distractedly. Maybe yeah. it seems like they're dancing or something. I don't even know what it is. Uh, there's that. Um, every evil creature. Oh my god, this is well. Gonna... It, I don't need to know them all. You you could just say like I think you've described it pretty well. Like yeah. the really big ones are the particularly noticeable ones. Were the ones right. I think we care about the most. Yeah, right. you know this place is filled with ghouls and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. The whole place is it's rife with them. I mean, you know, I mean. Yep. Not even including the ones that are going to be generated randomly, I'm sure. So. Okay, so there's that. Well, we need to get inside because, unfortunately, Bobby here needs buried. <laughs> You're going to bury him in the in the complex? Well, that seems appropriate. Yeah, right. It's a ne it's a necropolis. Why not? Yeah, uh, well, you know, it, it saves on burial costs back home. Sure. I don't have to ship him. Uh -huh. uh, it's here. You want to maybe reincarnate him as a giant white ape or something on accident? Well, you know, I, I... just hold off on that. Yeah, you keep him on the cart, or you, I mean, man, if you want to enter him in the next in the next hollow in the rock that you find, that's fine with me. I, there are many uses for dead bodies in a sure, yeah. in a dungeon. Yeah, he's he's a sl he's like a side of beef right now. Exactly, you know. Right. So um, you know, we take him with us. I'm with you. Okay. Do it. That's fine. I'm uh, actually going to strip his leather armor off of him, and I'm going to pop it on. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's what they're for. That's what dead friends are for in this game. Yeah. I'm, I'm only wearing it for him, you know. Right, yeah. In his memory. In his memory, exactly. Right. Okay. Um, okay, there you go. There. Yeah, the tunnel leads down into a... Uh, yeah, I mean, from here it looks like maybe the tunnel is... Uh, <laughs> Like that, uh, it goes maybe. I can't see any of this because I'm not in Rule Twenty. Oh. Well, there's no map. I'm I'm just going by the thing. Don't worry about. It. Uh, I'm I'm sort of eyeballing the map on here. I have a pretty cool diagram, but uh, if I had to modify it to fit in the barrel maze system, uh, I'm going to say that the the tunnel goes down at about a 30 degree angle, and it looks like from here, like strangely, it seems like it's long enough to go well past. Um, well past uh, the center of the complex, almost, is what it looks like. Um, you're not sure if it's an illusion or if uh, some weird uh, frittering of reality or, or bend in space-time or something, but it doesn't seem 
uh, one that it's uh, connected real well to uh, to this area. You know, the air shimmers around like whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Yeah. Going to look that up. Deep inside, you hear a howl like. Aah! Let's get to it. Let's find this thing. No, no, no. You you misunderstand. You don't run towards the screams. You run away. From the Someone screams. could need our help. I, I, then lead. Lead on. Let's go. Mm. You first. Dwarves, carry the torches in, please. Okay, yeah, right. All of you, first. Right, they look I'll the, attend to the rear. The dwarves look at each other, and uh, they say, you know, uh, judging judging by the way this thing's pitched in the uh, stonework, uh, I ain't seen nothing like this in all me long years, your, your lordship. Uh, I don't like the taste of this. Uh, sure, and I can, I can smell a, a great heap of gold down there, and... All kinds of weird magics afoot, but uh, uh, this tunnel, oh, she gives me the willies. Well, can you use your, um, you know, crafty knowledge to detect any traps that might be ahead? Hmm, uh, the, the traps, I mean, it seems like if this, this tunnel, uh, he looks down, he squints, right? He says, uh, it ain't right. It, it doesn't even appear to go down into that that mound. It looks like it it goes off somewhere far away. Well, what do you suggest that we go walk around the mound a bit, look for another entrance? We have mm -hmm. to get in there. Yeah. He, he scratches his head. He confers with uh, the bald headed one. Um, they whisper back and forth to each other. There's some hand signals and stuff. Your your dwarfs know that they're uh, they're talking about the legitimacy of their contract. Um, they turn and they say, uh, we'll go with you as far as the end of the tunnel, uh, but uh, we'll have to see at that point. Um, you can sue me in well, court this, or whatever. But. Yeah, well, this doesn't really spell, speak well to your character. You knew where we were going. We were very upfront about it. Mm. 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 He's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll have to play it as it lies, your lordship. Uh We'll go in as far as we can, and uh, uh, we'll be happy to refund you the difference, but uh, we don't feel good about this. Um, he, he, he whips out like a it's, – it's a little tapping device, you know, it's like a three-foot, you know, oaken staff or something, and he says, uh, all right, uh, follow me. Um, well, I'm going to pay particular attention to the ceiling and the back. Like, mm -hmm. when we go in there, I'm going to immediately look backwards and up. Sure. I just want to make sure that we're not like going into like something in the mouth or there's nothing on the ceiling or anything weird. Yeah, right. No tongues or teeth or anything. Yeah. 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 No, it's uh, actually, I mean, it's beautifully made. It looks like uh, some some uh, master craftsman of you know like uh, generations ago uh, put this thing together. Uh, it's quite well fashioned. The uh, the seams are all. I mean, you know, uh, staff. You can Is tell it? just by looking that the seams are all beautiful. Is it not a not a razor blade unlit? can fit in those cracks? Is it unlit? Yeah, totally dark. Yeah, sure. Okay, because all the enemies will glow, so I'm not super worried about it. But when mm. we but we do have torches okay. and lanterns and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you do have torches. Who's I, who's carrying a torch? Um, Waro's carrying a lantern. My halfling can see in the dark. Right. Plus the whole enemies glow thing, and that's right. my two guys. Um, Jason had to step away. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's but not here. I will assign his henchmen at least one of them to be carrying a, a torch. Oh, I didn't see. Because we need to burn things. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Well, torch. All right. No big well, deal. Well, he's a holding a lantern. Yeah. My guy. Okay. Where are the lantern? Check. That'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 20 turns or something like that. Yeah, it's no problem. He'll be able to. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, uh, gradually, yeah, you know, it feels like you've been walking quite some time down into this tunnel. And uh, as you, as it levels out, um, it opens, you know, there's a, there's an archway. It's maybe, maybe 15, 20 feet tall. Um, you note that uh, that's not quite as high as you've gone deep, right? The dwarves all know that. Okay. Um, so now you're um, you're in a squarish room. Uh, 
Um, it's clearly an entranceway, maybe the first part of a temple or something. Let's call it an underground courtyard, yeah? There's a, okay. As you stand there, your torchlight... Maybe you should wait for Jason to get all this when he comes back or something. Okay. But uh, it's a courtyard. Um, there's a sort of the C shape of um, columns, yeah, that, that go up, and there's a pair of bronze doors, double doors in the west wall. Um, pretty, pretty huge and uh, serious looking. The one on the left has a big skull on it, and the one on the right has a uh, sort of a, what do they call them, like a, not a, not a tetrahedron, a rhombus, is that what it is? Yeah, rhombus is like a, a, a funny shaped square, right? Okay. So the yes. the right one is a rhombus. Yeah, the right door has a big rhombus on it, and then uh, let me make sure I have this exactly right. One, two, three. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, right. Okay. Here you go. Um, four. Yeah, okay. And then, uh, um, yeah, I mean, one, oh, is he back? No. So, I'll just wait. Oh, that's a cat's tail. Yeah. Yeah. He's decided to visit and sit on all my stuff. I'm gonna need. Yeah, they do that, don't they? Yeah. Let's see, where, where am I at exactly here? Let me, give me just one second to make sure I got my bearings. Three. Oh, that's what's happened. I oh, gotcha. Hmm. Hey, guys. Um, hey. Sorry. No, that's all right, man. Yeah, family. We have really, really high winds going on right now, and it's banging all the windows, and it's scaring the crap out of my six-year-old. Ah. So I hate to have to do this. I'm going to have to call it quits. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all right. Okay. He's, he's yeah. freaking out a wee bit about this. Completely understandable. Yeah. So it calms down for her. Yeah, it's just that the weather's taking a nasty turn for the, for the worst, so I just got to go and yeah. try and get him to sleep. That's so. okay. Hey, yeah, man. It's good to right. with you. Thanks for coming. Right before yeah, he steps into the shadows, I, more. I stab the snooty high born noble guy. Ah, oh, <laughs> treachery. Treachery in the deep. Who would have guessed that it would come to this? You know, if you want, I'll give you the... I'll, I'll, I'll send Noah the, the PDFs and you guys can keep playing with them. Nah. No, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah, It's getting late anyway. I, I haven't been sleeping much these days, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, take my I'll take my tea and go. I you know I want I want to keep playing I want I want, I do want to keep playing I'm gonna pick this up at some point. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I'll alternate this. I'll alternate this with Space Dungeon. How about that? Uh, maybe so, an option. Yeah. yeah I don't get a chance to play half as much as I would love to. Um, like this is the first time I've played in a long time. Oh. I, I, mean, I love I, I love to uh, to um, to plague nobles. That's what I do. But anyway, that's, I'm, a, I'm a lower class uh, socialist. So, Anyway, yeah, it's good playing with you, man. It's wonderful to see you. I'm glad you're doing well, feeling better, and I look forward to having uh, you. Yeah, yeah. It was good playing with you, Chris. Yep. Yeah, so, take it easy. I wish I could hang, hang more. i got to go yeah, in. No worries, man. Don't worry. It's kids. 